Welcome back to the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike and I got my linebate Matt with me. And today we're going to go over some Blackhawks news. Uh, it's obviously some NHL news. It's the week before Christmas. Um, we will, will we? Oh yeah, we will have, uh, we'll drop one more podcast. It'll be on Christmas Day. And uh, maybe we should do a little something special for that one, man. Put like jingle bells on in the back while we <laughs> while we do a podcast or something. But uh, season's greetings to everybody. Merry Christmas. And um, we're going to get right into it. Top Blackhawks news was that Kevin Korchinski's father passed away. Uh, it's caused him to be away from the team. The last podcast, we mentioned that he was a non-roster delegate, meaning that um, he's not injury-wise, he's not on the team, not listed on the roster. I really, my heart really goes out to this kid, man. What a, what a, you know, bad time of year. You know, Christmas is here. He just made it into the NHL. He's living his dream. And, you know, he gets this kind of news um, about his father. So, uh, you know, from I, I would like to say I speak from both of us, you know, send our condolences out to the Korchinski family uh, and just this, um, you know, terrible, terrible news coming out from over there. On to the Blackhawks only scoring six goals in their past four games. Hawk dropped the last four games this week. Hey, Matt, is that included today? Yes, I did. Three... Yeah, that's included today. Okay. Yeah. Wow, man, that's incredible. Thank, well, it's been... Yeah, this was the first game we scored more than one goal. And it was right. against it's a very, bad. very good team. Which really, you know, it, we get these like flashes. We've got the Blackhawks team that's that's got about $45 million worth of players out there playing against one of the more elite teams so far in the league so far, about a third way into this season. And we almost took it into overtime. Matt, do you think that the Blackhawks, do do you think that maybe some of these older guys that we have on there are kind of holding us back and we need to let some of these younger players play? Or, you know, what what do you think the deal is? Uh, It could be a little bit of both. Uh, as for Morazic being, I guess he's considered an older guy. Man, this guy, he stands on his head. I don't know if he you does. saw that save. I mean, that's probably the save of the year up to date. Um, uh, I like With the stick. Oh, God, that was like a Dominic Hoshik like save. Just desperation. <laughs> Throw the paddle up and just pray it hits it. <laughs> I mean, he made it look good. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, he did. I mean, this guy's probably going to command. Or, I mean, somebody's going to call at the deadline. Hey, what do you plan on doing with Morazic. And the right. way he's playing right now, I mean, if I'm Edmonton, if I'm Toronto, I know Toronto had him before, I'm really looking hard at this guy. I'm going to send some scouts and actually watch this guy. Hey, this guy is playing out of his mind right now. We we might want to load him up for the playoffs. Yeah. Um. As for the yeah. other vets, you know, Nick Foligno played awesome today. He scored two goals and great leadership out there and you know it he very feisty forward i like it he's he says uh during the intermission i think he was talking to panger he said this is the way hockey's supposed to pl- be played like you know shoving and little scrums after the whistle i love that from a vet and this is the guy these young guys are going to follow and obviously you know connor had a two assist game he's working his way up the ranks in the the calder race He's way up there at the top. I think he's got a pretty solid lead, too, now. Um, but as for, I, I think it's, like you said, it's I, how much are we spending? $45 million, if that? Like, it feels yeah, like the it roster, compared to other teams that are up against yeah, the it. Yeah, roster, the roster that they had out today was, was about $45 million. So, I mean, yeah, we got some new guys. We got some inexperience. We got some just, you know, grinder-like guys. I mean, you're playing against... A team that has a Vesna goalie in net. You got the best defenseman in the league right now. You got three of your forwards in the top 10 in points. So the Hawks played very well today. I mean, yeah, I'd like to see a W like every fan. But, I mean, that's all you can ask for for your team. to Compete hard to the end and give it your best. And they gave it their best, man. I thought it was a great great performance for the Hawks. Just uh, couldn't get that W in. And the ref did miss a call at the end. So you never know if you had a power play at the end. I think Bedard yeah. was tripped. Yeah, it would have been was. nice to get that six on four advantage, and maybe something could have happened. Maybe Felino could have got in front of the net and got a hat trick. You never know, but still good effort. And you know, if they compete hard, that's all you can ask for. Yeah, Connor was uh, was 
you know, kind of cussing out the ref. Yeah, he was a little a animated. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like I that. Seen him that he, yeah. Usually, he's quiet, composed, yeah. and it's good to see him. You know, show a little of emotion out there. Well, he was he was flat out tripped. Oh yeah, Everybody and it, knew it, it was it. a missed call, and they're and they're trying to win the game. Yep, he competes hard every game. He wants to win. That's all he cares about. He wants to perform and. I mean, that's a sign of a great player right there. And that's going to rub off on these other players that are coming up in the next few years, too. Connor Bedard continues to be the only bright spot this season, leading all rookies with, um, I think it's 26 points now, 12 points, 14 12 assists, goals, and right? 14 yeah. assists. Yeah, yeah, he's he's playing really well. But Davidson still has his work cut out for him. You know, you know and, um, you know, something I want to talk about, man, is that, you know, that, I think everybody needs to understand that even though that we got Connor Bedard, you know, we're in the midst of a rebuild, meaning that this team is not a team that is going to be winning a ton of games and they're not really designed to be winning a ton of games. And during this time, this is when we're supposed to be putting young kids in so they could be in there making mistakes. So when you're like, we need to send Wyatt Kaiser back down because he's not playing well enough. It's like, well, Wyatt Kaiser needs to be making, he needs to be making mistakes so that he can learn from them so that he can grow as a player. Um, and the same thing with Soderblom. We aren't, are not looking to compete for a Stanley Cup this year. Soderblom, as of right now, is a prospect-type goalie that has earned the right to be a backup in the NHL. And this is our time to figure out where he's at in his development, how well that he's playing. We do not need to pick up a vet right now to try to start winning games because it behooves us not to win games so that we can get a chance at another top three pick come next uh, summer. You know, just like the Blackhawks drafted Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves in subsequent drafts, we could use another top tier talent. This also goes for Lucas Reichel, who is, yeah, he's snake bitten so far, but he needs to learn to be a pro and he needs to learn to get used to the grind and playing at this type of competition. I'm not sure if people know this, but the vast there's a vast difference between the being playing in Rockford and the AHL and playing in the NHL. You could almost have another league in between Th that the difference between the two is so profound. Playing in the NHL is incredibly tough. So Lucas Reichel, who was having a tremendous season last year in Rockford, is having some growing pains this year um, as another top prospect of ours. So we need to just let him play, let him play it out, and uh, and and let him get that experience. Matt, where are you at with this in the rebuild? And maybe um, fans having some really unrealistic expectations for some players and what exactly a rebuild is. Yeah, we said it right when we got Bedard. The work starts now. I mean, you. Right. this is when we have to find players to benefit Connor. Because he's your piece, your main piece. So putting Lucas Reichel on the fourth line with fourth line guys isn't going to show you anything. I don't know if this is a coaching decision or if it's Davidson, but it's wrong in my opinion. And like you said, he needs to be out there in those game situations where it's, you know, top minutes, last minute of a game, we're down by one. He's the guy you want to see if. He, he's the difference maker. He could tie the game late. Stuff like that. On the fourth line, getting limited minutes does him no no good at all. You might, you might as well send him down to Rockford. I just, yeah. I, I, I don't like some of the things, uh, how Luke Richardson's handling the whole uh, Lucas Reichel thing. And our buddy, the, the brush line, was saying the same thing to me. We were talking today. Saying, oh, what's up with I'm? He said, Richardson, I I just don't get what he's doing. He's I'm, he's losing me, and I really like this guy. I want to root for this guy, but some questionable things, and I think I'm with him on that. I uh, today against the Canucks, they put him back on the first line with uh, Kurashev and Bedard. That's good. Yeah, he's playing against an elite team. I guess you could consider it an elite team this year, the Canucks. So, but he, he, he need to do it every night because. 
the talent, you know, the talent pool isn't there. We got a lot of fourth line guys, some third line bangers, and we got Connor, we got some old veterans, and you got to say Lucas and Connor are probably your one two prospects in the in the system right now. So, right. We need to see what they got and they need to play together and develop chemistry. Yeah, I'm with you 100% uh, on that because you know, these kids, this is the time, you know, when, when we're trying to build a team, that's not the time for to to find out what we have. Like this is the time where it's a free for all. Go out there essentially lock in your spot on the team so that um, they're looking at other positions to fill in. You know, this is an opportunity for that. A, a lot of a lot of growing pains. You know, Peter Morazic um, is not going to be our number one goalie. You know, headed and you know, say within you know three to five years, we've got some young prospects that aren't even ready yet. Drew Camesso is one of them. Uh, someone that we're looking to to hopefully see more of within the next uh, couple of years, just to. Get a get a look to see where he's at with his development. We'll see him this year. But I think, I think at some maybe point for in time, a couple yeah. games, maybe later in the in like after the trade deadline or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think they'll call him up. Like they used to do it with Crawford. They, you know, you call him up against. Say, ideally, you want him to play against a team he can compete against, but maybe they're going to want to throw him into a good team and see where he's at, like against good skill, which is a mm-hmm. which is a good good thing to do. But you don't want to kill the kid's confidence. Like, hey, I get my first start, and okay, here comes the Golden Knights, the defending champions. You know, they're going to sure. send four lines hard at you all night. You're going to get shell shocked after, you know, f- five goals against in the first period, and then it's like, okay, he's now not even close. But you want to set him up to succeed. So, I, I like what they're doing. I think that uh, uh, Camesso will be a. I think he could be an NHL goalie, but like we we talked about before, the goaltenders take a long time. They're, the the rare breeds will make the jump, like the carry prices and stuff like that. But uh, I think Camesso will probably will take maybe another three years. But I think he's going to get call ups, and maybe two years. I could see him taking over a backup role if if it doesn't work out in Rockford or whatever. But it, it's going to take some time. Growing pains. It's going to suck. Rebuilds suck. They do, but. I, in the end, like David said, if you hang on for the ride, it might be worth it. <laughs> Isaac Phillips is someone that I think that he has developed year after year into a better player, and I'm, I'm really interested to see how this kid goes. Uh, Vlasic has definitely gotten better year on end, probably out of all the defensive prospects that we have, I think that it's kind of crazy that at one point Nicholas Bowden and Ian Mitchell were our top prospects and now, um, yeah, you know, Phillips and, um, and Vlasic and, and Alec Regula as well, kind of, you know, stepped up and took over those, those couple spots. Uh, last I heard was, didn't Ian Mitchell, um, didn't he get sent down? I, I haven't heard anything about Ian Mitchell in a long time. I think yeah, I think they sent him down on waivers. I gotta t- I gotta take a look I, at that. I mean, I'm a huge fan of Phillips. I thought today he played great. Yeah. He made some good breakout passes, just smart plays. Vlasic's been good all season. You know, Korch obviously is he's NHL ready, the kid. It's gonna take him some he time. Is. He's gotta you know, deal with some family issues now or not issues, family you know, he needs family time now with the horrible tragedy that happened to his family and he's probably gonna take some time and but you know he it, it's got to happen, and but he's a very good defenseman as well. So I, I like four defensemen. Kaiser, I think Kaiser's a good kid too. It's just yeah, like you is. said, you you got to put him out there, and you got to be patient with him. He can't expect, yeah. uh, you know, like he's gonna be like Duncan Keith, two thousand ten. It's it's just good. Duncan Keith. His first couple seasons, he was a turnover machine. You know, yeah, so he was time. And then he, a lot of people don't remember that. No, they don't remember. And Seabrook was his partner that whole time. Something I really right. liked about uh, that was Trent Yanni coaching that year. He kept Seabrook and Keith together the whole season. And you know what? It paid off because they learned together. They failed together. They they figured it out together. And look, they won three Stanley Cups. So you got to let right. these guys develop chemistry and trust in each other. So, I, I mean, eventually... The only way you do that is with time. Yeah. 
like Connor Murphy, uh, Seth Jones, I, I I think they're probably holding some guys back. Uh, I know the importance of you know veterans in the locker room and stuff like that. You, you need a, you need voices in there, and I'm not questioning the character of Murphy. I think he, I think he had a lot to do with the the team going to see uh, Korchinski uh, at the yeah. funeral, and I respect the hell out of that. That's a great teammate right there. But I think his on ice play, it's just not as it's not as good as his you know character as a human. He seems to be a very yeah. decent, very well, you know, well like guy, but I think there's some younger talent that probably deserves a spot before him. So I, we I, we give him a lot of flack, we do, dude. We do. But he and you know maybe we something that we haven't said you know enough is that you know Connor Murphy is a great person. You know, and, and 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 to be honest with you, a lot of guys that we talk about, you know, we're just trying to, you know, we're not talking about any players as people. You know, we're just talking about just hockey ability and hockey in general. Because this is another thing that came up on, um, I was on Facebook and some people were talking about players and, you know, that line, it's like, okay, we should be able to talk about their on ice play, but we're not insinuating that they're, you know, bad people. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you, sometimes you harp at a guy like, you know, like, yeah, sometimes we're tough on Connor Murphy. We, we were tuck, tough on uh, Jack Hughes two years ago. Now, oh, look yeah. at him. Well, rightfully so, he, though. Rightfully we so. We were tough on that poor kid. And I, like I, I remember, I think you were going through some COVID. I did this podcast by myself. Ugh. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm I'm not ready for this." But here we go. Jack Hughes signs an eight year deal, eight million dollars. I'm like, "Oh my goodness, I got a topic to talk about." And <laughs> you know, he made me look stupid. I'm, I'm sitting there yeah. like, "How can the Devils do this?" And this kid is, you know, he's just like two points a game. He's averaging with some right. time out, and he's still like top ten in points. This guy's playing like an MVP. So. Yeah, yeah he is. I mean, we're tough on guys, like, but like you said, but as as um, the off ice stuff, Connor Murphy seems to be a great dude. Just, I, I'm not yeah. not a big fan of his uh, his defensive play. <laughs> Considering he's a defenseman, you know, yeah. it's it's pretty important. So, so Matt, we're losing games, and you know, it it's not pretty, and it's not something that you know you typically want, you know, but. We have an opportunity to get some, um, you know, some prospects coming in this twenty twenty four, this twenty twenty four um, draft. Macklin Celebrini is, as of right now, the top rated kid coming up. Potential, p- possibly number one draft pick. Out of Boston, correct? Out of Boston. Oh boy! And uh, I was going to say, forget about it, but that's uh, New York. Um, yeah, he like Six a clam foot. chowder type of, <laughs> type of accent. David Pasternak. <laughs> the lazies. Um, he's six foot, 190 pounds. Uh, he's 17, so he's not done growing. Um, yeah, man. So uh, he shoots left. Uh, I'd like to see uh, more out of this kid. He's ranked number one by everybody right now. You know, he's uh, he's the runaway, as of right now, the top kid. Um, Joe Igilna, J- Jerome Igilna's 15-year-old son, um, he's coming up in the prospect pool as well. He's only 15, though, so he's got a couple He's got a couple years before he starts. Got a great teacher. Yeah, yeah, before he starts, you know, uh, really hitting those, uh, those charts for, you know, where he's going to go. But as of right now, Macklin Celebrini, a Canadian kid, I think he's from, yeah, he's from Vancouver as well. So Vancouver's pumping out these uh, really good, these really good players. Matt, do you think that there's a chance that we can get two number ones in a row? And, and, and that's the first question. And number two, um, how many people will try to burn down the United Center if that happens? I was just going to say, <laughs> I think the NHL world would absolutely hate that. But Oh, man. You remember a time? Why? Edmonton, didn't they uh, get how, three in a row? How many times? Exactly. How many times did Edmonton and get look the where they're one draft They're pick? still and trying they to find they, it. Well, at, at the time, they didn't do shit. Well, there was a, let, me, let me look back there on There was a the time let me they had Taylor the Hall. I Wait, I might be wrong with Taylor Hall. Ryan Nugent Hopkins was a first round pick. 
He was. And then they had that Yakupov. Was he? Hold, hold on. I think it was Taylor Hall, Nuge, and then um, Nail Yakupov. Taylor Hall went number one? I yeah. Thought so. Okay. I thought he dropped a little bit. It was between him and Sagan. I think Sagan went number okay, two. So that's four. They had four first round picks at one time with McDavid. And hold on a second. They're here. still trying to figure it out. So Edmonton draft. You picks. never know, man. I think it was a Yakupov. I could be right. He was number one. Let me see here. 73. Um, hold on. Here we go. Scroll, 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 scroll. <laughs> Let's go into, I'll start at 2010. Um, holy smoke. Is that the... Come on. Man, this thing. Is that the number of traffic? Jeff Bookaboom. <laughs> <laughs> His son's playing. Oh, yeah, really? Bookaboom's son is, I believe he was a prospect of um, Tampa Bay. Okay, let's see here. The position, yeah, that's it. Number one. All right. So I'll go to 2010. Um, yeah, they were bad. Number one draft pick, Taylor Hall. Okay. In 2010. Um, round one, number one draft pick. Let me go to 2011. That's nuts. Number one, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And let's see if I... Get the three for three here. Nail Yakupov. Yeah, man, I was Yakupov. right. Then three in a row. Taylor no, Hall, in a row. Ryan, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and then Nail Yakupov. And then in 2013, now, 2013, they, uh, their first draft pick was the number seven draft pick, and they got Darnell Nurse. <laughs> oh, so then McDavid came after, right? They got another and, one. Yeah. Oh, and then they got Leon Dreisaitl at number three in 2014. So the answer to your question is if the Hawks did get the first round pick, I think it could happen the way that they're playing and the odds and all that yeah. stuff. And the second question, yeah, the United Center would be burnt to the ground because everybody <laughs> hates McDavid Chicago. 2015. Everybody hates the Hawks now. Yeah, they hate, we're like the villains somehow now. Yeah, every everybody hates the Hawks. There's always negativity in the old uh the old uh, era, I guess you could say, but yeah, I think this, uh, the whole Korchinski funeral thing, I thought the team going there, I thought that was a huge, huge thing for the locker room. And, you know, it brings the guys together. They they play for each other. And I'm sure Kevin thought it was, you know, I'm sure it meant the world to him and his family. Yeah. And sometimes these things, you know, they bring, a, a, you know, you know, light back to the, the negativity that's been going on it's like well the hawks that's pretty classy of the hawks to do that it's it's really hard to really hard to orchestrate that you know when you're when you're on the road yeah. and stuff and those guys had to sacrifice a little bit i'm sure to get there but i'm sure they didn't Some mind doing time, it yeah. and that i stuff like that is going to make you know put you back on track and that, that's like i said connor murphy and nick felino i think had a lot to do with it too and that's just uh Really, really good thing for the locker room and the the club as as a whole. Need to get Felino that C man. Oh God, yeah. You know what? Absolutely deserving. I just don't think they're gonna they're gonna put out a temporary. You know where captain. I'm coming oh, I from? Know. Absolutely. Yeah. The guy clearly. You know, even today during the the intermission talk with uh, Panger. He, the way he speaks and his actions on the ice, yeah, absolutely. He's a, he's captain material, and you know what? I'm sure the guys call him the captain. You know, yeah, yeah. He doesn't have the C, but he's our guy. We're we're rallying behind this guy for sure. But I just don't right. think the Hawks organization front office they don't want to hand out a temporary C on this guy. You know, because he's he's not going to be here forever. He probably won't even play another two three years. So yeah. that that's what I I think their thinking is. I think that he could be you know, say he plays three years with the Hawks, I think that he, he would be a fan favorite. Like a like a guy that he came in at the end of his career, but a lot of people will remember him like, yeah, man, Feligno will be remembered as, you know, to some some people as as a black hawk. Do you know For what sure. I mean? The the ideal situation would be, God, I wish Taves was healthy, you know. And yeah. it's literally taking his C off his jersey and, you know, putting it on Bedard's. That would be the coolest thing in the world, but, you know, the health isn't 
you know, probably not there for Taves and hopefully he's out there, you know, getting better and poor guy took some nasty hits in his career and, you know, I I I hope we hear from him soon. It's like he's been in the dark for a long time. Yeah, I think I think that he's honestly uh, maybe experiencing some life. I, I don't know if you remember in his last press conference, he was talking about how you know he's always put himself first for his his NHL career, you know, and he had to do that so that he could stay at that professional level. And maybe you know meeting somebody, uh, he maybe in the midst of trying to make a comeback, he's just like you know what, um, there's more going on and you know, in my life that I, maybe it's time for me to change the page. I've made $115 million in the league. Um, do I need to put my body through any more of this? Yeah. You know, selfish me and, wants um, him to not come back. I want him to yeah. be a Blackhawk forever, not put on another sweater. Like what Kane's I, doing. I can't take this it. Kane, like the original six circus thing he's going through right now. Hopefully, yeah. you know, you want to root for the guy because he's just been so great for the Hawks. But, I mean, come on, man. I don't want to see him do anything in Detroit. And what's right. funny is a lot of the Detroit people, they, they've always hated Kane. And, it, you know, they, I'm sure they hated Chelios, too. And, <laughs> when, of course, he goes there and now he's like a fan favorite jersey selling machine and stuff like that. It's like, <laughs> so shut the frick up, you know. But I, going back to Taves, yeah, I, I hope one day he can come back to the organization and be you know, a part of it, like a player development and work his way up. You know, I, I, it's just, you you want, or even an ambassador, dude, you want that guy around, you know, you want like guys like, you know, when Makita was alive, Bobby Hall, seeing those guys in the arena, that's just, that was awesome. Wouldn't like, what not isn't, don't you think Taves would be somebody that you would want, like maybe like coaching kids on the ice in a way? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like a developmental, like, you know, yeah, face off coach, <laughs> like something. Yeah, man. I mean, or maybe even just like like a center coach. Like, hey, look, this is how this is the system. You know, this is how you should play it, and just go over tape with guys. Like, no, you don't want to do this because of this, or you know, or or help them with with winning face offs. I mean, he was, dude. He was back. To, he was winning like sixty percent of his, his face offs in his last yeah, season. His whole career. You know, it wasn't like it was a crazy. Fluke. Yeah, man. every year was. Hey, over what seventy percent or some whatever it was. Uh, I'd have to look it up, but last year he was at sixty. Yeah, that's still unbelievable for. That's yeah. incredible. I mean that that that's a guy. Just he, give him something. Give make up a title and just make sure he's a hawk. <laughs> yeah, you know, like yeah, give him five hundred k a year. Look, look at you Stevie know, Wise and, doing. You know he he yeah. and he had to go to Tampa and t- I don't care what anyone says. Stevie Y built that dynasty. It's his team. He built that dynasty, dude. He. And didn't get any credit for it because he, you know why? He wanted to go back home. He wanted to go yeah. to his town where he made his name. He wanted, he wanted to be the, the GM of the, the Red Wings where he, he was a captain for like, what, 20 years? And, yeah. I mean, that longest tenured captain. I, I hope that's what we could do with tapes. That's how he's very hockey smart and. Just he's an icon here, man, and that's you want guys around like that. And I just I hope they yeah. can get him back. I don't. I I'd hate to see him go somewhere else. Like Duncan Keith is in Edmonton right now. <sighs> Come on, yeah. But I think he's doing yeah. that because his family's he's got close. A, he's bro. got little kids and stuff. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, it, it sucks seeing that. It does. You know, back at that time, say around like the 2010s. You know, we had a lot. There was so much. Canadian talent coming out that was so good and it seems man like the tide is kind of changing with the US and Canada do you think that America is is producing better hockey players in Canada right now I do and I'll, I'll say it right now if the Olympics happen and the NHL approves and the NHL PA approves you know the players to they could play USA is one of the gold I just love, I think it's the deepest we've ever seen the talent in this, in the U S and I think yeah. Canada is getting weaker. I think the goaltending is just garbage. They're not producing like Russia's got Shesterkin, you know, they got Vasilevsky, they got Bobrovsky. We got Connor Hellebuck. We got John Gibson, Ottinger, Gorgiev. I, I <laughs> the typo. Yeah. But I mean, Oh yeah. my goodness. The USA, one. man. 
I, like we we talked about this. But who's can, who's Canada's goalie right now? Back then, when uh, we were kids, who's Canada's goalie? Uh, Marty Brodeur, Patrick Waugh, Eddie Belfort. <laughs> it, one of those three every single time. USA's goalie. Yeah. Uh, it's just Mike Richter. That's all we got. Mike Richter. Now we got like five <laughs> and John Hextall. Yeah, we got like five goalies to pick. So I mean, this year, like going over the roster. I mean, just thinking about my top line right now. I mean, you ideally you Matt, can Matt, even don't, don't 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 switch from goalies. Who are who would you say are the top three goalies for Team USA? Connor Hellebuck, Jake Ottinger. This is a tough one. A Demko. Demko is up there. It's it's so close, dude. I I would say, but I guess Gibson would be my four. But I would I would go Connor Hellebuck. I'm gonna go Thatcher Demko and Jake Ottinger. Matt, why does this list have Alexander Gorgiev as a as an American? I I don't know. Uh, the the list. I think it's it's a typo. Uh, what's the link I sent out? Uh, NHL. And it's so yeah, done that's that. a huge f up <laughs> because yeah, yeah, even his birthplace is Russia. So yeah, that's Bulgarian Russian or something yeah, like that. But those are my goalies, and for Team Canada, I mean. I, Aiden Hill, you know, the the, the <laughs> Vegas goalie that, you know, didn't even know if he was going to be a starting goalie that season. And th- I think the team was just, it. they are still really deep. He kind of benefited off that. But, hey, he made the saves that he had to do. He's a Stanley Cup champion. But he's, you can't match him up against Connor Hellebuck in a best-of-the-best game. Yeah. Uh, looking at some of these these players, man, number one, I'm going to name off some names here. From this, These are all Americans. Austin Matthews, Matthew Kachuk, Adam Fox, Charlie McAvoy, Jason Robertson, Quinn Hughes, Jack Eichel, Jack Hughes, Jake Ottinger, Connor Halibut, Kyle Connor, Tage Thompson, Brady Kachuk, Clayton Keller, Dylan Larkin, JT Miller. Holy Keep smoke, going. man. <laughs> Jake Gensel. John Carlson, Thatcher Demko, Alex DeBrinkett is at 20th here. Uh, Jacob Slavin, Jeremy Swayman, Joe Pavelski at 23. Uh, Alex Tuck, Jacob Church, Churchrin, John Gibson, Johnny Goudreau, Seth Jones, Good Troy buddy. Terry, and Zach Wierenski. Yeah. Who, Seth Jones or Troy Terry? Uh, Troy Terry. <laughs> <laughs> they got Brock Boster at number 32. Hey, he's man. a stud right now. And you know who you didn't he read? Is. Kaner. Who? Oh, Kaner would know. probably be ranked higher than Pavelski, in my opinion. I think he would I be would somewhere so around 20 well. right now, just because of the, the hip injury. If, if Kaner is the type of guy where you put him out there and he will perform, perform no matter what the uh, no matter what the competition well, level you, is. You didn't even He'll, read Besser? Oh, yeah, you did say Besser. Kreider, yeah, a 50 Besser. goal scorer. Cole Caulfield, a 40 goal scorer. It, Cole Caulfield's kind of kind of a little high up there, in my opinion. I, I think he's right he's where good, I but, think Trevor Zegers at forty is uh, very high, very generous yeah, because it the is. guy could do a I, Michigan I, move. But I mean, I wouldn't put I would put Keandre Miller higher than Cole Caulfield for sure. Oh, for sure, I'd put Miller higher. I'd put Miller in the top twenty. I honestly, he should be where Seth Jones is at. That's how good Miller is. Uh, he's been good. We can, Jacob uh, Truba. I. I yeah, yeah, I was going to say, we can keep him in the back just in case things get nasty and we start losing. He can go out there and just, start concussing guys. Just start guys. bulldozing dudes, the Canadians. <laughs> but but look at this, dude. I mean, I've I've never seen a U.S. roster like this before. How deep, like, go back to the top of this list. You got... A- so, okay, so this is what I want to know, is who do we have center Brady Kachuk and Matthew Kachuk when things start getting tough? I... I- Oh, if if it starts Dylan, getting a little little uh, little, little chippy, chippy out there, uh, I mean, I that, that's a tough one because there's not too there's not a lot of toughness. The Kachuk boys are, I think they can handle probably the whole the whole line them just the two of them. I think Brady could probably <laughs> be for two guys. That's how I I would honestly I would think it would be so cool to see Matthew centering the Kachuk brothers. And then you got the Hughes, yeah. you know, you got uh, the Hughes brothers on defense, which is crazy well, we, to think we, about. I was gonna say we, I was gonna say we could put Jack Hughes on that line, centering put the Kachuk brothers. 
So you got a five eight. You got a five eight so he's, so skilled he's, guy. So he's so he's pr- so he's no one's touching the Hughes. You know? No one. Nobody's yeah. touching him. Absolutely. You could. There's a lot of line combos, but that that would be really cool. I mean, <laughs> the Hughes and the and the Kachucks I, I on the mean, same line. You don't even think about guys like Jason Robertson because it. <laughs> The, the talent, just the, the top, I guess you could say the top three guys, maybe the Hughes brothers and the Kachucks kind of overshadow all these poor other guys. But Robertson's mm-hmm. a 40 goal scorer. So, I mean, you there's going to there's gonna be guys, really good elite guys, not making the team. That's how crazy it is to think. I mean, it, back then in the 90s, like if you were from America, there's a good chance you're going to play on the Olympic team. I mean, we, we, we right. got to see some really good guys we we were lucky i think that's when usa started saying hey take us serious you know you got richter and net brian leach uh ronick amani uh she's just absolute studs chelly uh madonna all those guys darian hatcher Madonna. kevin hatcher kachuk Ka- yeah keith kachuk i mean that so that those are some freaking rock stars dude the 90s rock stars i yeah, I, I really enjoyed watching those guys and then you had some good young then guys. Then you start naming off you start naming off guys like Wayne Gretzky and you can't Mario match. Lemieux. You can't match up. Steve yep. Eiserman, Brendan Shanahan. It's like holy it's like, yeah, we're naming off some studs, dude, but it's like holy but shit. They cancel each other out. If not, the they, they, they even one up them. You know, Eric Lindros could be the fourth line guy for Well, I yeah. think I think Jerome McGillno was a fourth line guy as a fifty goal it's scorer. Insane. It's insane. <laughs> But I, this, I think oh I, I'm going to predict. I think the U.S. takes the gold this year. Canada, I think they're they're going to compete. They always fight hard. That's their sport. You know, they're gonna they're gonna push to the end. But you know, you got to be. Well, let's take a look at the let's take a look at the Canadian roster here. Okay, we've got obviously number one Connor McDavid. Then we've got Kale McCarr, Nathan McKinnon, Sidney Crosby. Braden Point, you know, dude, I would argue that Sidney Crosby should be at the top of this list, dude. Even today, well, Connor McDavid is good, dude, but he hasn't done shit to to win on uh, as a team. And by when when Sidney Crosby was his age, he had already. Sid will be the captain of that team. He would absolutely Sid be will the captain. Wear the C for Team Canada, and he is well deserving of it. Um, number five, Braden Point got Mitch Marner. Brad Marchand, William Nylander. What the heck? William Nylander's not Canadian. Yeah, he's from Sweden. That's a, that's a, yeah, they got him on this list. There's another, there's some, we, we got to write these guys, terrible. dude. This is where the talent yeah. drops off, in my opinion. If you put Mark Stone in the top 10, yeah, that's just, this is where it's yeah. going to start being okay. These guys are good. Oh, they got, they got Dougie Hamilton at number nine. <laughs> Will Stammer even be healthy to play at 11? Alex Petrangelo, Devin Taves, Josh Morrissey, Shea Theodore. Yeah, dude, this is it very drops off. Like Aaron I said, Eckblad. where's the goaltender? Where's our first goaltender? Uh, I've, I haven't even read one yet. They got Drew, Drew Doughty at number 19. Latang at number 20. Mark Shifley at 21. Barzell. Barzell, man, he's kind of like a question mark, man. I wonder. I want this guy to be a what's beast. What's going on with that guy? I mean, yeah, when they got rid of Tavares, this this kid, it, it was his team, and it's just I I don't yeah. know what it is. They can't find him. They can't find him anyone he can just. Uh, and and their system is boring. They're a very boring team. It is. I like to see him somewhere. Like, can you picture him on Vancouver right now? He'd probably be. He'd probably oh, be top man. ten in points too. Yeah. They got Bor Horvat at twenty seven. I think he should be higher. I'd have him higher than Shifley and and Brandon Montour. Um, Carter Hart at number twenty nine. That's the first goalie, and he's had some questions, that, dude. Car- there's some. There's been some oh, question marks yes. with this kid. Big he's twenty five, and they rushed him. Jeff Jeff Skinner at number thirty three. I'd have Jonathan Marshall higher than Jeff Skinner. Yeah, you know what though? That it's weird. That poor guy doesn't get enough respect. The, the, he's going to be a free agent next year. I, right? you know what? Yeah, he's, he's going to be thirty-two. Uh, he great, great year last year. Obviously, won the cup and he put up some good numbers. The first year in Vegas, he put up some good numbers too. He just doesn't get the respect. It, it's probably because of his age. He's he's kind of little up there, but very very good player still. 
Dude, at, at number 33, who did I name? Hold on a Jeff second. Skinner. At number th- at number 33, I named Jeff Skinner. For the Americans at 33, I named Chris Kreider. 50, 50 goal, goal guy. Score. Insane. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I, I'm really excited. And I hope the, the players, they want to go play. And it's not the amateur stuff again. I mean, it's cool and yeah. everything. It's that they're competing. You know, like the whole 1980 team, they were a bunch of college kids. Yeah, that's cool. But I want to see the best on the best, dude. I mean, that that's that, that makes it entertaining. And it's it's fun. It is. It is. And this is actually pretty fun, man. We should look at some of the other countries, too, and yeah, see. Yeah, let's well, do Russia, Sweden next maybe, time. Yeah, I was going to say Russia, Sweden. Maybe you got Finland. kind of a dart on this list at 52, which... On Where? this Canadian list. I didn't even see that. Which is insane because I bet you right now I would put him. He's better than Carter Let's Verhage. put him at number 10. Let's knock oh, yeah, Stone I was gonna out say, and put could, Bedard. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got bad blood with Mark Stone for for going after a kid trying to make the, the team in preseason yeah, and he's dude. whining about getting hit. Dude, this is hockey. Just. You know, take your flat nose yeah. face out of here and shut your mouth. You just won the Stanley Cup, and you're gonna go, it, man. It's like this dude's this dude's out here trying to make yeah. a living. You know, trying to make the team. Well, it, it's hot. Well, it's pro- it's probably physical. because he gets hurt yeah. so often. He gets hurt so yeah. often. That's probably why. Oh yeah, he. he well, don't put your don't. You, you got to be responsible when you're playing. You you can't skate and expect no one's gonna touch you because you're Mark Stone. You know. You, you gotta, you gotta be able to take a hit if you're a hockey player, and I, I hope that kid ends up making it one day and just rolls him one game and says, "Hey, remember me from preseason?" <laughs> I just got that five million dollar yeah. contract. How's your back? <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool, man. This is a good one. This was a lot of fun going over the, uh, you know, just the, these possibilities. Um, I, I can't wait. We're about two years away, so hopefully they could, you know, okay this because I'd love to see these guys, you know, come together and, and put together a nice a nice tournament. Yeah, the la- the last one was good. Uh, twenty ten was the best. You know that Vancouver. Uh, I think it was in Vancouver. That was the year of um, just the Blackhawks. You know, representing the Olympics, it was awesome. So. It was a great time. We, the USA didn't, you know, end up. They got the silver, and Crosby got that golden goal. But still, very right. entertaining, awesome hockey. Yeah, it was. It was. Well, all right, everybody. Want to wish everybody, uh, you know, have a great Merry Christmas. You know, season. It's that time of the year. We, we got one more. We got to do one more before Christmas yeah, comes out, go. man. I'm, I'm going to get the Russia and Sweden then, uh, lineup set up here. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. This is the Tomahawk, and we're out of here. <laughs>